Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number 13 in our incredible new tutorial series where you are learning artificial intelligence on the Jetson Xavier NX. I'm going to need you to pour yourself a nice enormous mug of iced coffee. That would be strong black coffee poured over ice, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And I am going to need you to get out your Jetson Xavier NX gear and get ready to learn some cool new stuff. As you're getting your gear out, as always, I want to give a shout out to you guys who are helping me out over at Patreon. It is your help and your encouragement that keeps this great content coming. You guys that are not helping out yet, think about looking in the description down below. There is a link over to my Patreon account. You can hop on over there and hook a brother up. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and let's talk about what we are going to do today. What we're going to do is we are going to be installing the facial recognition libraries on your Jetson Xavier N. Next. Now, up until this point, we've been doing artificial intelligence on tracking on a really simple object like a blue pen or a red pen. We've been recognizing objects and tracking objects based on color. And that's kind of nice because it's pretty easy to do things that way. And you get your servos working, you get your algorithms working, you get everything working based on a fairly simple object to track. But it's a lot more interesting if you could find faces and not just find the faces, but identify the face. That's just, we're not going to just put a box around someone's face, but we're going to know the person that is in the box. And so that's the direction that we're going to be going for the next few lessons. And so today what we need to do is get those libraries installed. And it's not really very hard, but it is a little bit tedious. And so we're just going to have a lesson today on getting all of that business installed. And so I will need to get out of your way. I will need to call up a fresh new terminal window. <clears throat> have a little sip of coffee. And let's jump in and get this going. So the first thing that we are going to need to do is a sudo apt get update. We need to make sure that we are starting with updated packages. So sudo apt get update. And that is looking pretty good. How long this takes is going to depend on how long it's been since you have updated your system. And so mine has been updated fairly soon, uh, fairly recently, and so it didn't uh, it didn't seem to take very long. But that is because it doesn't seem to be connected to the internet. So let me come back over here. And I don't want to fight with Wi-Fi, so I'm going to plug an Ethernet cable in. And let's try this again sudo app get update. I don't know uh, if you guys have this problem, but I've just found sometimes the Wi-Fi is not as good of a connection. And for the sake of a smooth video, I will just plug in that old Ethernet cable and have a very good, uh, very good uh, connection. Okay, it looks like that that it looks like that that went well this time. So I believe we have everything up and running as far as internet connection. Now we are going to need to install some helper packages. So I'm going to do a sudo apt get install. And I believe I can make this window a little bit deeper for you so you can see things a little better. All right being mindful that you're able to see everything. So we're going to do a sudo app get install. And then what we are going to need to do is we are going to need to install CMake. Okay. And then L-I-B-O-P-E-N-B-L-A-S dot D-E-V. Okay, so CMake is just something that allows you to, helps you compile C programs. Lib open blos dash D-E-V. Okay, now we are going to do lib l a p a c k. So lib l a pack p a c k dash d e v, and then finally lib jpeg lib jpeg dash d e v. Hey, 
I need to make sure to give a shout out to Adam Geitge, G-E-I-T-G-E-Y, from uh, Machine Learning is Fun blog. It's got a newsletter and stuff. Great guy. A lot of this stuff that I'm doing is sort of like stuff that I've learned from his site. So I always want to be mindful to give a shout out to the guys that I am learning from. So let's see. App git install CMake lib open blast-dev lib la pack dash dev and lib jpeg dash dev and let's see let's hope that works okay it looks like it is happy so far do we want to install we'll say yes i don't think these take very long to install so we will just sit and chat we will sit and chat for uh, a few minutes while this stuff is getting installed. Now there are a couple of them here that are going to take a little bit of time and I will probably pause the videos for those but this one I think will go fast enough that I won't need to pause it. Boom there we are and I just want to glance at this it looks like everything went okay I'm not seeing any big error messages so it looks like that we are doing pretty good here. Okay, let's see. We have got our helper packages installed. And so now we should already have NumPy because we've been doing that. And so now we need to actually uh, download and install a program or a package, a library called Dlib. And if I am not mistaken, Dlib uh, was made by, I'll find out who that was, who did the Dlib package. Uh, let me just take a second to make sure that I am giving a shout out to the people that I should give a shout out to. Dlib, I believe, is Davis King. Okay, so we give a shout out to Davis King for his work on the Dlib package. Okay, so now we're going to be downloading something. So I always like to go to the download folder. So I'm going to say CD and then downloads okay and if you're not in home if you're in some random place you could do cd and then squiggly slash downloads and that will certainly get you there so we are in our downloads folder now and so i am ready to do this installation and so i got to type this really really carefully so it's going to be wget wget and then http slash slash dlib.net. So we're going to dlib.net. We're going to files. We are going to dlib-19.17.1. So this is going to run out and it is going to grab a tar a compressed file and then we'll uncompress it and work with it. So dlib.net slash files slash dlib dash 19 dot 17 dot tar dot bz2 and it's connecting. Okay, it looks like it found it. So that's good news, right? That is happy that we got that typed in there, right? If you get an error here, either you don't have an internet connection or you're behind a firewall or uh, you typed it in wrong. Okay, so now we're going to need to tar that. Okay, so we are going to say tar and JXVF. Someday I will explain what all that means, but for today, tar JXVF and then dlib-19.17.1. Two. So this should be that big tarball that we just downloaded. So, okay, look at that. It is unpacking it. So that indeed is very good. It's happy that it found it. Okay, now we need to go down into that dlib folder. So like if I look at ls, you can see that I've got that dlib1917. So I need to cd down into that dlib-19.17. Okay, now uh, apparently somewhere along the way there is a one-line error in the uh, in in one of the uh, 
CUDA, CUDA libraries. And I don't know exactly how it ended up this way, but what, what I found based on what, what I have read is here is the way to correct it. And so let me show you. We need to gedit. Okay, so we're in the dlib-19.17, so we need to gedit. And uh, we're going to go down into dlib slash CUDA slash CUDA CUD in in underscore dlib api dot cpp so this is gedit dlib slash cuda slash cud in in underscore dlib api dot cpp okay and this should gedit open a uh, file hopefully there will be something that it opens. Yeah, look at that. Okay, there it is. So it found it. We typed it in right. <coughs> now we need to find a line in this code and we need to comment it out. And so let's do a search and do a find. And we need to look for forward, forward underscore. And I need to make this where you can see what I am searching on. There is a line of code called forward underscore algo. Forward underscore algo is equal to, okay, I guess they have a space there. So forward algo space and then equal and then space and then forward. Okay, and now it is found it here. It is this forward underscore algo space equals space forward underscore best underscore algo that whole thing we want to comment out so we're going to put a slash slash to comment that out okay and now we are going to do a save okay now hit save again just because I'm obsessive compulsive I'll hit save three more times one two three okay I'm sure it is saved now. Well, one more. Okay. All right. Enough of that nonsense. I think it's saved. Okay. So that is all saved. So now we need to actually run. And I think we're going to have to go back up to that top folder. So let's do a CD to downloads and uh, or CD squiggly slash downloads and then let's do a ls and then we need to go back to uh, c cd down into dlib-19.17 i do believe that that is the that is the uncompressed file and now do a ls and there is our setup pi and so we need to do a sudo Python 3 set up dot pi okay and we need to tell it to install okay it looks like that's happy I am going to pause the video here and I will come back when this is all done. You guys enjoy your coffee and this could take 30, 30 minutes to 60 minutes. And so, you know, as long as things keep moving, don't interrupt it. Just let it go. I'll try to not do other things when a big, massive something like this is going on. I'm just going to leave the Jetson Xavier alone and we will come back in a minute when it is all done. And we are back and it looks like over here that we successfully got our Python 3 setup run and uh, the necessary installations done. So now at this point what we need to do is we actually need to install the face recognition library and we will do that with sudo pip3 install and then face underscore rec recognition and I really don't remember this might take a few minutes as well but let's see let's just make sure that it looks good and gets going okay uh, all right we get that we anytime we do a sudo pip3 install we get that warning so that should be okay no big problem there 
and it looks like things are moving along. Hey, I got to give you, you guys a heads up. When we do things like this, and I probably should have said this to begin with, the biggest problem that I see when I look at comments on like my old Jetson Nano lessons or some of the earlier lessons on other platforms is I say I am working on a certain version of the software and that's the version I'm working on at the time of installation. Then you guys go out and you install something different and then when you try to do this lesson, it doesn't work. So I need to say very explicitly, I am on Jetpack 4.4. It's the version that I just go and get Jetpack 4.4 from the NVIDIA site, and I am running on that. I haven't tried to recompile OpenCV. I haven't tried to do a bunch of crazy stuff like that. And so kind of the frustrating thing for both of us is, is that at the time that I'm making this lesson, I am on the most recent Jetpack. You guys might come in later and maybe already Jetpack 4.8 is out and you're running on Jetpack 4.8 and you're wondering why my video doesn't work. What I re would recommend is, is that when you go through my lessons, run on the same jetpack that I am running on. And so if there is like a, uh, if there is a jetpack 4.8 out, do this lesson on Jetpack 4.4. Now what you could do is you could have two different SD cards, one that you keep just for my lessons so you progress along with me on those and then the other one you can go out and do the latest and greatest and be upgrading and updating and installing and doing all of that stuff but I think that you will learn better and you'll have a better experience if on the SD card that you go through these lessons make sure you start on the uh, same jetpack that I start on and don't update things unless I update them in a lesson and I think that will probably do the best for you okay look at that I chatted a little while and it looks like this is already installed what we really want to see is did it really get installed so we will come over here and I think the easiest thing would be for me to just type in Python 3 and then I'm going to say import face recognition and uh, okay it says it was already imported what okay let me do a control C let me uh, let me kill this I just want to make sure that I can import face recognition without a problem so I'm going to kill that I'm going to start a new terminal and then I am going to say Python 3. Okay, and then I'm going to say import face recognition. Okay, and uh, it imported without any errors, and so that's saying that we got it installed good. All right, guys, that's all I'm going to do today. In the next lesson, in lesson number 14, we can move forward with the next, uh, we can move forward with uh, starting to do face recognition. We've got done what we need to get done for today. So this is Paul McCorder from toptechboy.com. I will talk to you guys later.